if there was ever any doubt that family court cases are some of the meanest and the hardest and the most dangerous cases for our whole system of justice, and there really shouldn't have been any doubt because I kind of scream it from the rooftop a lot, but I will submit to you tonight the breathtaking climax of a mystery that we've been reporting on now for two weeks, the disappearance of these two women, Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly, on a backcountry road in the Oklahoma panhandle. Tonight, we know exactly what the Oklahoma authorities believe happened to these women, both of whom live just across the state line in Kansas. And we know exactly who they think is responsible. It's a little bit of what you probably suspected and a lot of what you didn't. First, let's just go with the headline. Two bodies recovered, four people arrested. It is heavily presumed, but not yet confirmed, that those two bodies are Veronica and Jillian. Is there confirmation at this point that the bodies recovered are J Jillian and Veronica? Not at this time. We have, um, we identified that there were two bodies during our search. Um, both of those um, deceased persons have been transported to the Oklahoma Medical Examiner's Office where they will do a proper identification and also um, look into a cause and manner of death. The four people that we were looking for were found, arrested, and placed into custody within the same day and there was no resistance. The four suspects he referred to were the grandmother of Veronica's kids, Tiffany Adams, up there in the top left corner, along with Tiffany's boyfriend, Tad Cullum, with the big long beard. And then a couple whose names we had not heard before, Cole and Cora Twombly. They're uh, occupying the bottom two spaces of that grid. Tonight, each of them, is charged with the following, two counts of first degree murder, one count of conspiracy to commit murder, and two counts of kidnapping. And something else those four allegedly have in common besides an elaborate criminal conspiracy is a quasi-religious anti-government group called God's Misfits. This is a lot to unpack, but let me tell you, it is well worth the effort. So pull up your chair, nice and close, and get comfy. The whole thing starts and ends allegedly with that custody battle over Veronica's kids. The kids that she had with a man named Wrangler Rickman. That's him. But you will note that Wrangler Rickman is not on the list of people arrested. The victims were trying to pick up Veronica's kids with Wrangler from Wrangler's mom, the kid's granny, Grandma Tiffany, Tiffany Adams, who is on the list of arrested people. Grandma Tiffany had custody of the kids while her son Wrangler, the dad, uh, was in prison and then later in court ordered rehab. So his alibi is, well, seems airtight anyway, right? Veronica was allowed visits with her kids every Saturday, but there had to be a court approved supervisor. And the woman who usually did the supervision was not available March 30th. Or so Grandma told the investigators. But the investigators later found out that unbeknownst to Veronica, um, the mom, of course, Veronica's the mom, don't forget. Grandma had told the supervisor, uh, just go ahead and take a couple weeks off. I'm going to do some, you know, I'm going to do some questioning of my, my kids here, find out, you know, how they're doing. But you go ahead and take a couple weeks off. She wasn't not available. Grandma told her to take a few weeks off. So all that left mom, Veronica, uh, forced to find a replacement. If she wanted to see her kids, she still had to have a supervisor, right? And that replacement was Jillian Kelly, this beautiful woman on the right, totally unsuspecting, a victim who may or may not have known what an ugly, sickening custody dispute she was being drawn into. Grandma was due to meet up with Veronica and Jillian, the supervisor, to hand over the kids at 10 o'clock in the morning at that spot right there. This is the day before Easter, right? The planned location was this abandoned gas station at the intersection of two highways in Texas County, Oklahoma. But that rendezvous never happened. Allegedly, Grandma Tiffany had no intention of giving Veronica her kids. Not that day, not never. And what she did have in mind, allegedly, she did not carry out alone. Remember those names that are new to the story, Cole and Cora Twombly? Okay, well, here we go. Uh, investigators talked to the Twombly's 16-year-old daughter, who essentially blew this case wide open. The 
The daughter says her mom, and I think it's her stepdad, because she's got a different name, and it seems her dad is a different dad. But she basically says that her mom and that guy, her stepdad, along with Grandma Tiffany and Grandma Tiffany's boyfriend, Tad, that all four of them got together every week as part of that group I mentioned, the God's Mitfit, Misfits, that religious anti-government group. The group often met up at uh, Cole and Cora's house. And Cole and Cora's daughter overheard some things and saw some things. And she says that Grandma Tiffany gave everybody, quote, burner phones. And that she saw two of those burner phones charging on her mom's nightstand. She says the night before Veronica and Jillian vanished, this teenager says that Cole and Cora, her mom and her stepdad, they told her that they were going on a mission, that they would not be there when she woke up in the morning. And sure enough, that teenager says they were not there when she woke up in the morning. And they did not get back until noon, driving separate pickup trucks. And then... Apparently, those parents asked that teenager to clean inside one of those trucks. Clean inside one of the trucks. The teenage daughter was so curious as to what her parents had been up to. And amazingly, she says they told her everything. Allegedly, they told the teenage daughter that they blocked the road that Veronica and Jillian were traveling on. And that they diverted that car to where the others were just down the way waiting. Allegedly, Cole and Cora Twombly told their daughter, quote, things hadn't gone exactly as planned, but they wouldn't have to worry about Veronica anymore, end quote. That teenage daughter says she asked her mom why Jillian, the innocent supervisor, had to die if their problem was with Veronica, the mom of the kids. And her parents allegedly said that Jillian wasn't innocent either because she was helping Veronica. That teenage daughter also asked whether the women's bodies were put in a well. She says her parents allegedly told her, quote, yeah, something like that. In fact, the bodies were found yesterday below a dam in a pasture about eight miles away from where the women were killed. According to court documents, investigators, quote, found fresh dirt work where a hole had been dug, filled back in and covered with hay, end quote. Early on, the authorities had gotten a search warrant for Grandma Tiffany's phone. And wouldn't you know it, here were the web searches that they found on Grandma Tiffany's phone. Taser pain level, gun shops, prepaid cell phones, and quote, how to get someone out of their house. They also learned that Grandma had bought five stun guns on March 23rd, a week before the women went missing. She also bought three prepaid cell phones, burner phones, which all were later tracked to the spot where Veronica's car turned up abandoned and where two of those burner phones were tracked to the very spot where the earth had been dug up and filled back in on the dates and the times in question. Veronica and Jillian's phones both went silent at 9.42 a.m. They, they disappeared. As for that crime scene, the abandoned car, we now know what the police found in and around Veronica's abandoned car. It was, quote, evidence of a severe injury. Also, Veronica's glasses were found in the road near a broken hammer. And a pistol magazine was found in Jillian's purse, but no gun. Let me just stop there for a second. Jillian's purse. Jillian's the supervisor. Apparently, Jillian may have suspected that things might go south because she had a pistol magazine in her purse. No pistol. It's also the first we're hearing that a purse was left behind in that vehicle. And still after all of that, not every question is answered. At least one mystery remains. The teenage daughter who gave investigators so much information said five people were involved in the killings. The fifth name that she gave, also an alleged member of God's Misfits, his name is Paul Grice. But I'm going to be dead serious here. It is not clear tonight who Paul Grice is and why Paul Grice was not arrested and charged, at least with conspiracy, like the rest of them. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.